is about flat shapes like lines, triangles, quadrilateral circles, and shapes that can be drawn on a piece of paper. Plane geometry is the study of figures on a two-dimensional surface called a plane. The figures drawn on the two-dimensional surface are called plane figures. Simply put, plane geometry deals with points, lines, angles, and shapes. That being said, plane geometry is also referred to as a two-dimensional geometry. All the two-dimensional figures consist only of two measures such as length and breadth. These shapes do not deal with depth or shapes. Now that we have taken a look at the introduction part of plane geometry one, let us now narrow plane geometry one to what we call the angles inside the plane figures. Now don't forget that a plane figure is any figure that is made up of two dimensions. So we can also talk about the plane figure being figures that once you draw them, you see only one surface. So for example, if I should draw a triangle, once I draw this triangle, you will now agree with me that I can see only one surface of the triangle. Also, if I draw, let's say, a four-sided figure like a square, this is a quadrilateral because it's a four-sided figure. A quadrilateral is any diagram or plane figure that has four sides. There are a lot of examples for quadrilaterals, but let's narrow it down to the square. Once I have drawn the square, you'll see only one face of the square. If I draw a circle, we'll see only one face of the circle. So you see, all the diagrams I'm drawing are referred to as plane figures because once they are drawn, only one surface or one face can be seen, and they are two-dimensional figures. Now, these diagrams came along with what we call angles. But before we take a look at angles into details, let us first of all look at how angles are drawn and then a little bit about the angles formed around or on a straight line. Then we can now go down deep into angles to look at angles formed inside and outside plane diagrams. At this part of the plane geometry one, we want to take a look at angles or an angle. Let us look at it well. Whilst we started looking at plane geometry, we were made to understand that plane geometry actually talks about points, lines, diagrams like the plane figures, and then their angles. Now, angles are part of plane geometry, and they even play major roles or they take 90% of the plane geometry topic. So we will have to then understand everything about angles before we can then solve questions around plane geometry. So then the question is, what is an angle? An angle is formed when two or more lines meet at a point. So this is what I mean. If you have a line, let's say this is a line, this is a line, and another line joining this way. When they meet at this point, let me call this point, let's say point A. So this line is meeting this line at this point A. So I'll call this AB, and I'll call this AC. So line AC and line AB are meeting at A. So you see, once they meet, an angle is formed here. So you realize that an angle is formed here. So this is the angle. So an angle is formed when two or more lines meet at the point. These are two lines meeting. Now we can talk about different lines. Let's say I have this line, I have this line, and I have another line going this way. So you see, these three lines are meeting at this point. So I have an angle forming here and an angle formed here, and another angle formed here. So we have now come to agree that an angle is formed when two or more lines meet at a point. Also, let me tell you something. An angle can be formed when two rays are projected from a point or away from a point. Yes, even though they meet at the point to form the angle, when they are also moving away from the point, they still form the angle. And don't forget, the point at which the angles meet is what we call the vertex. So this is vertex. That is the point at which the lines meet to form the angle. And then the plural form of the vertex is vertices. So in plane geometry, you realize that two rays that converge at the point can also form an angle. And I see these lines that form the angle, they are what we call the arms of the angle. 
or the arms that forms the angle. So if two rays converge at the point, they can form an angle. And if the rays also move from that point, they form an angle. Please, an angle is measured with an instrument called a protractor. So if for you to get an angle measured accurately, you need an instrument called a protractor to get the angle. So with that matter, angles are going to be measured with protractor. But in this particular topic or course, we are going to calculate for the angles other than measuring them with a protractor. But all we need to understand is angles are measured accurately with a protractor. By diagrams, we can get more examples or more demonstration of angles. Let's take some examples or demonstration of angles by diagram. When I draw, let's say this, and then I draw, we can find an angle here, we can find an angle here. We can also draw something like this, and then we realize that an angle is here, and there's still an angle is here. We can get a diagram like this, we get an angle here, an angle here, an angle here, an angle there. So we can get so many diagrams with angles. As we go on, I'll be drawing so many diagrams and be pointing out the angles to you. But for the meantime, let us look at the way we can label or we can name angles when they are drawn by lines or by diagrams. I have entitled this, Ways in which angles can be named or labeled on diagrams. Now we can see an angle right here. So let me just mark it in this diagram, this angle here. Let me intentionally call it angle X. Now an X from the previous videos that we saw under algebra, we realized that X, just like all other alphabet or letters is called a variable in mathematics that means that the value of this x is unknown so it is an unknown figure for that matter when you represent an angle here by x you are trying to tell all of us or including yourself that you don't know the particular measurement or the particular value for that angle and this is allowed so with this it becomes easier for students to handle so most students prefer to go in for the variable method of representing angle so if you draw another diagram, let's take for example this diagram. You can put A here, B here, C and D. You have represented all the angles by variables. And with this, you can calculate easily with them. So this is what we call the variable way of representing angles. So when you are doing it, you do it rightly so that you can be able to calculate to get the right answer. With this, let us now take a look at another stage in the angles that we call the interior and exterior angles. Now, an interior angle interior angle is any angle that is found within a diagram so if i draw a diagram like this and then i get angle a angle b angle c and angle d all these angles are within the diagram so angle a b c and d are referred to as interior angles also we have something called the exterior angles now exterior angles rather are angles that are found outside the diagram so if I have this angle, let's say angle U, angle P, angle S, and angle R. Angle U, P, S, R are found outside the diagram, so they are called exterior, exterior angles. So take note of these angles. The interior are found within the diagram, and then the exterior are found outside the diagram. Let us now proceed to look at the types of angles and how we use those angles to do some calculations in mathematics.